I mean, basically my um, part in Warner Ave, I guess, is what it's it's referred to. But uh, I uh, just randomly got asked to move out to California. I went on a trip. I got on uh, Foundation and did like a three month trip with Shane and Eric and like everybody that was on Tomato at the time. It was basically like me being a skate rat coming into this two to these two huge vans of like 30 people with Jamie Thomas and Ed Templeton and like Maldonado and it was like right after Welcome to Hell and, and Donnie basically, Donnie Barlow basically threw me in the mix. He just gave my sponsor me tape to Todd Swank and I just got thrown into this thing. But I immediately clicked with Shane, Alyssa, Maldonado and Eric and we basically just became like one of the vans. So it was like uh, going to, in, in like moving into like my second family is kind of what it became like. So. Um, it was kind of a no-brainer. Like when I got back out to California, they had just gotten the condo, um, and there was an open room, so I took it. And basically, I moved back to, I moved, back, I went back to, to Connecticut, grabbed my shit, and just came back out. Yeah, him and him and Greco go way back. New Haven, man, that's right. Tony went on that Tamietto trip, and when he went on that Tamietto trip, he got to meet all of us, and we became such good friends with Tony. And I think he was just like, I don't want to live on the East Coast anymore. I want to live where you guys live. And we we're just like, all right, man, yeah, come through, dude. Like, we got a spot, you know? You can have this room, pay this rent, you know? And then we had a couple guys that were like video game junkies. Tony was definitely one of them. Gambling was huge with us. We loved to gamble. CeeLo, all night long. I mean, you had people losing their entire box of product for the month. Like, oh yeah, you have no more boards or shoes left, huh? Yeah, sorry about you. So Vanes and I, our obsession was, was gambling. We would shoot dice until like five in the morning on a regular basis. And sometimes, like, I remember one time, so basically in Warner, that was, that was what we did. We played CeeLo, we played threes every single day, no matter what. We had ones, constantly had ones. Whoever had a dollar, yeah, and it was like it was like what we did sometimes all night long. We would just drink beers and and shoot dice. So Baines and I would be like the, the sickest with it, basically. We'd be like like we'd stay until everybody left, and we'd play against each other. Um, we got into this thing someone sometimes where we would play until whoever had no money left, and whoever won the money had to make breakfast or something like that. That's actually the first time I got introduced to English breakfast from Baines by by like. I think I, by winning and he had to get breakfast or something like that. Like I never had beans and toast and eggs. So now I make it all the time because we used to shoot dice. I think one time I won, this was kind of messed up of me, but like he didn't have any more money. So I put up like 20 bucks against his, like he had a new pair of costumes, like the brand new costumes that just came out and he was so psyched on them. And he put those on the table and uh, I won and I wore them the next day. <laughs> I know he probably doesn't remember that, but it is, I, I'm sorry. Like I, that was like, that was fucked up. Like rubbing it in his face. I broke Mark's camera. It won't focus. I really broke Mark's camera. Okay, it's all good. I feel much better. It was like, um, it was pretty crazy because it wasn't like this this place that I think that people knew it was going to be this big skate house. It was just friends moving in with each other. And I was like the last one in. They had already got it. I think the story was like Shane and Alyssa went and put on like really nice clothes. I think Shane wore a suit or something like that for the interview for the condo. Um, and they got it and basically everybody just moved in and it just became this like place, this vortex for people that were coming through to stay. And I think Andrew, I don't remember exactly, I think Andrew and Sumner already had the place up the street in Warner. But basically when I moved out there, it was, it was already set up and those guys were our neighbors and we lived literally half a block away. So all we did was skate and party and it just became what it ever, whatever it became because of what we were doing. And uh, yeah, the more time went by, like the more of a, of a place it became to hang out, I guess. For me, it was like this is the, this is this is like I don't even, I've never really told anybody this before. For me, filming outside of like sometimes of, of skating with those guys, I would get more done because I was never on the level of like like say for Andrew. Like when I would go skate with Andrew, I would just sit down. Like I I wouldn't I would just be amazed and I wouldn't 
you know, we'd go to like this, he'd have things planned out and, and for some reason like, I didn't get that back then. They have like a strategy. Like, you would just go to a spot I would just go to a spot and see, yeah, I would go to a spot and see what happens. That's kind of how I grew up in the skate park. I would just turn on the camera and film. So when I would go out with these guys sometimes, I was in awe of how professional it was. And I don't think I ever picked that up the way I should have because that's the way you, you really can get a lot done. So we'd go to these spots that I couldn't skate, you know, like a 15 star or something like that. And I would watch it go down that I'd never seen before. And just have no business being there, I felt like. You know, it, I wasn't a big rail guy, so um, I think whoever was filming for Tamiero at the time I'd go on, out with a few times, I think uh, Dave Wang was um, around a lot from Long Beach. We did a lot of stuff with him. And just random people like who would, who would come through. So I think that's where a lot of my footage would come from. But to be honest with you, like, yeah, like I said, I, the, Warner, the Warner days were tough because also, even though we were young, we were, we were partying a lot. So there'd be a lot of hangovers, there'd be a lot of days where we were being unproductive, but like we, you know, on the weekends were kind of the day to go out. So that's when shit had to get done. Tony, ha! Huh? The, the hiss. The hiss. Yeah, actually, he just came back to LA, actually, Tony did. Um, yeah, Tony was, <laughs> he's, a, he's a weird one. Like, really rad bloke, but a weird one. Do you know what I mean? He'd always do this thing like, <laughs> at me and I'll be like, what is that? Why are you doing that? And he'll be like, <laughs> and I'll be like, I don't get it. And he'll be like, ah, just, just saying, or something. And I'll be like, what is that? But no, yeah, Tony, Tony was a rad one. Kickflip melons, really good kickflip melons. Um, good tray flips, I don't know. I don't know, I don't want to list off of like the, the tricks he was good at, really. I just, you know, he's just a, he's a good human. There we go, you should just full stop that. Good human. <laughs> Man, I don't even know if he's gonna get pissed at me saying this. We went out to some bar in LA one time and someone punched Shane for some reason. I think I know who it is, but I'm not gonna say the name because I don't know for sure and I don't wanna just call it out. But Shane had his front two teeth, like basically knocked back. And this is this is a perfect example of Shane, like on the way home he's laughing and telling jokes. He's like, oh, I got my teeth knocked out, I got my teeth knocked He's like dancing. The next morning we go to the diner with Shane got blood all over the front of his mouth his teeth are knocked back and he's joking with the waitress asking for like toast and asking for all these things smiling at her and it's like it's the, the one of the gnarliest things you've ever seen but like it's so shane it's so fucking funny in the moment that we're all dying you know like he eventually went and got him fixed but like he didn't even go to the doctor the next morning you know he's like up getting wild like <laughs> going to the diner asking for toast with his teeth literally like pushed back in his mouth. Dude, I don't know. I don't even know if that's a good story or not. I just know that I'm like, as we're talking about this stuff, it's all coming back. Like I haven't thought about some of this stuff in so long. The thing is, is about Warner is that it was a crazy party house, but it wasn't like as gnarly as sometimes it is it comes across. Like there wasn't like raiders every night and craziness going on, but there were times like that. You know, when, when the Arizona crew would come up or there were people in the house, that's when it would go off. But like, there were definitely quiet nights where basically I'm playing mini golf video on PlayStation and like people are just hanging out watching no. skate videos and stuff like that. But, but yeah, DeSilva was just mellow, it was just chill. Just lovely kid, like cool, like it's kinda like him and Scotty were kinda like just the chill guys and but until Scotty got fired up. Fire it up, Scotty. When Scotty gets fired up, he's crazy as fuck. Especially when there's dancer around with that crew. Alyssa Alyssa was yeah, she was just one of us. She, I mean she was part of the crew before I even came about. So, Alyssa and I, Alyssa was one of the, the closest I came with. She was, like my, she was like my best friend basically out there. And we're still close and we still talk, but like, she was like basically calling the shots most of the time, you know, like, she didn't take shit from anybody. She'll call you out right away. Um, she she did what she wanted, you know, but nice about it. Like, she's she, she's always known who she is, you know, she's, she's sick. Not bad. Not, not one bad thing to say about that girl. But one thing about Alyssa is, she was like, she was the queen of of rolling joints. You know, she was so amazing at rolling joints. She was actually better at rolling joints than any of the guys. Alyssa, by far, I think, actually taught everybody else how to roll. Alyssa, man, man, that's the sister right there. I've seen her battle, dude. I've seen her just take some hits, pick herself back up, get it in. Like, you seen her video parts? I mean, 
She's no joke, man. This is G. Yeah, I think Alyssa was the first girl I'd ever seen that could keep up, but she's also violent. <laughs> I've seen her fucking punch out, punch out some dudes before plenty of times. But she, yeah, she, she was just kind of, it's cool, she had her own room, like we respected that she was a, like a girl and shit, like which she should. I miss like the days waking up where, like in that time of my life, there was no plan any day. You'd wake up and you'd make the day happen. There was no like waking up to go to work. There was no, yeah, there's no responsibility, which is kind of a crazy way to live now that I've become so, you know, I'm an adult now and that's a, yeah, we're so young and just to be, you know, living in California, being on my own, meeting these guys, they were such new friends and they were such, we like, consider them family that like waking up, I just miss waking up, like taking the cruiser to the store, getting breakfast, coming back, and then like being, yeah, slowly after meeting the day, but like being excited on my way back because like, where are we gonna go today? What's gonna happen today? You know, still no responsibility and things like that. Like looking back, that's not the way to sustain your life. But at the time, like in that moment, it was like it worked perfectly, you know?